my first talk ever. Um, so I don't know what possessed me to make you guys suffer through this, but we're going to do it anyway, so here we go. Um, who am I? I am Matt Schar. Uh, not, Matt, you were close. You were so close. You could even pretend there's like an SCH in Schwakowski. I, I bet there is. I don't know. Interestingly, it used to be Sharkovsky, and then Ellis Island happened. So, yeah, you were even closer. Um, all right, why am I here? Uh, I'm here because I work at a company that is down the street from here. It's Elemental Technologies. I should have like, put a picture of our company there. Um, we do video encoding. Uh, we write more specifically software that encodes video or transcodes video. So we take video and move, uh, change it from one format to another. Um, so what exactly does that mean? That's moving pictures. <laughs> if people like movies or TV or YouTube or anything like that, that's, that's what we do. That's what we enable. Um, we like those. <laughs> They're everywhere, especially nowadays. So in the before time, um, you, used to be able, you used to have to do this thing where you sat down in, on a couch and you watched TV. And that was pretty much the only way you could get uh, video. Um, it was like, well, you could go to the theater or whatnot, and I'm sure there were other projectors or something like that. But primarily, it was TV. And so there was really only one medium for delivering video, which was television. Uh, now what we are what we consider over the top. So that's an industry term called OTT is the acronym. It means going over the top of the traditional uh, uh, content distribution. Uh, that's like your, um, your Comcasts, your Time Warners, your cables, uh, people, people who deliver through a set-top box. And so we're going over them and delivering content directly from the producers to you, the consumer. Um, I hope that wasn't a terrible description of over the top. Uh, so it used to be um, that, TV, that TV was the only way you could get video. Now we're increasingly seeing video transmitted over the internet. In fact, there are many, many households that are just, in fact, doing away with television at all. Uh, how many of you guys actually have a cable subscription? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty low. So right? Right? I, I mean, it's crazy. I, I actually, full disclosure, do have a cable subscription, but it was only to get a better internet deal. <laughs> uh, so th there's this big shift that's going on, uh, and where we're now consuming more and more content over the internet. And that's actually a problem, um, because we don't have enough bandwidth, and it's really expensive to pay for high bitrate uh, content. Uh, to all of these devices, because not only can you consume internet on your personal computer at home, how many people actually still have a PC at home with a tower? Yeah, that's it. OK, all right, that's better. Yeah, well, we're developers, so we actually probably have towers. Um, uh, but you now have laptops, you have tablets, you have mobile devices, all of these things that can now consume video and view it. Um, and there's actually a lot. I should have also put formats here. Um, there's so much data. Uh, and no one can agree on the best way to transmit this data. There's a lot of different packagers out there. There's a lot of different ways we wrap up video. Um, everyone has their own player uh, and therefore their own format. I won't even get into the conversation about DRM, um, which there, there are so many different kinds of encryption schemes. Um, and, and we have to support them all, which is lovely. <laughs> why we're employed. So how does it all happen? It's, it's just magic. It's lots and lots and lots of magic, or you know, hundreds of thousands of lines of code, um, which can be fun. It can be also very stressful. Um, and there's just a little bit more magic in it. Uh, so what magic am I talking about? Um, I alluded earlier to the fact that the internet transmitting video over the internet is actually getting to be a problem because there's a lot of it. And there's a lot more video every single day. I could quote some statistic and say there are so many terabytes of video data created every minute of every day. Uh, I would be lying to you. Uh, but trust me, it's a lot. Um, and we're saving all of it. Uh, and more and more people are consuming video. And there are more markets emerging everywhere in the world that, that want to watch video. And so it would be massively inefficient to distribute raw video over the internet. That's just not a, it's not an option. And so what we do is we take raw video, or what, what our company does is in some cases take raw video. We also sometimes take encoded video that's already been compressed. 
uh, and we convert it to something that's uh, a different format, something that's more that's smaller. Um, and we do that by actually throwing away all the data. You don't actually need every pixel of every picture in a moving picture in order to make a movie. Um, we have, uh, what about all the pretty pictures? We have these things called keyframes. Um, and those are actually uh, full, full images, you should say. Now, I mean, I, I don't know. You could say you could think of them as uncompressed, but it's basically just where we where we we encode every single pixel. Um, that allows us to say start an encode, and then we have things called predictive frames, which really are kind of like magic. Um, those predictive frames reference other frames. They reference information in other frames. Like so, we have a keyframe that has a bunch of data in it, and then we have another frame that's slightly different. Um, the reference frame or the predictive frame can reference that keyframe. Uh, to say, OK, well, this pixel was over there, and now it's going to be over here. So I don't actually have to encode that new pixel. I can just say, well, there was a change. I mean, it's kind of like version control in a sense, where you just you save a change set every single time. And so for, um, for video, we have a sequence of different frames or different pictures. So we have uh, what we call keyframes or iframes. Um, Keyframes and iframes are actually not the same thing, but uh, we talk about iframes as, as things that reference only information inside themselves. Um, and then you have predictive frames or reference frames, which we call B frames and P frames. P frames reference only information that came before, and B frames actually reference things in the future as well as the past. Uh, and this is made possible because you actually don't need to encode video in, the, in uh, presentation order. So you can, you can look at video out of order and then make judgments and predictions based on the information that you have at a time. So you don't look at a single frame, you look at a set of frames. And then your algorithm writes, writes the predictive frames in between your iframes and whatnot. Um, it gets even more complicated. You can actually divide frames into things called slices, which are independ uh, independent regions of a frame. Um, there are such things as I slices and B slices and P slices, and those like I frames and B frames and P frames reference various parts. So an I slice will only reference itself, and um, a, B, a B slice will reference other slices in the future and in the past, and a P slice references things in the past. And it gets even better. There are things called macro blocks, which are the lowest level, well, not the lowest level, but um, <laughs> I know it's really fun. Uh, these things are, are, are not only what we talk about as a, a region within, within a slice or within a frame. Um, I'm, I'm speaking mostly about H.264, which is one of the more popular standards um, for encoding video. There's also H.265, which is the newest, um, one of the newest standards. It's, uh, it's, it's more difficult to encode, but it allows for better quality and, and lower bit rates. Um, so where do we fit in? Where does, where does this software happen? So the source here, I don't know if you can actually see that. The, the text is a little small. But we started a source, which could be anything from uh, like a raw video feed from some camera, some HD camera the news crew has. And that gets transmitted somewhere, uh, eventually to an encoder. That's what my company makes. Um, and we receive that source. And then we decode. We, we sometimes, well, we have to decode the source. Um, and then re-encode it as whatever format, uh, whatever format uh, the, the user or the company wants. That's where we throw away all the data. And then we package it. And then oftentimes it goes to a CDN, which is a content delivery network, and then to the client. And what does this have to do with Kung Fu? Uh, David Carradine. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy watching Kung Fu, <laughs> or Kill Bill, uh, also Kung Fu, I guess, uh, then we make that possible. You can watch Kung Fu by watching encoded video on the web. So uh, we're hiring. Uh, again, I work at Elemental Technologies. And uh, this lovely domain, uh, Elemental.com is actually owned by someone in the uh, TriMet community. Uh, but we don't own it. <laughs> So we are ElementalTechnologies.com. Uh, come talk to me afterwards if you want to know more about our company, what we do. Um, we, a lot of what we do actually isn't uh, video encoding, or a lot of the software uh, jobs that we have are not actually video encoding, but around the pipeline. So that's, that's uh, this thing. So how do we actually get video to your screen? 
Um, and coding is just that one piece of it. There's the packaging, there's the distribution, and all that. Um, so thanks a lot. <laughs>